We got to talk about the massive surge in interest rates that is happening across the U.S. economy right now. This is something that absolutely no one expected after the Fed rate cuts. The 30 year fixed mortgage rate is now spiking to almost 7%. And this suggests that the market is baking in inflation expectations into the future, that 2025 might be an inflationary year for the U.S. economy and that the housing market and the labor market are gonna slow further due to these surging interest rates. Let's take a look at this, everyone. Over the last month, the 30-year fixed mortgage rate has skyrocketed from 6% to almost 6.9%. In addition, the 10-year treasury yield, the amount the US government has to pay on their long-term bonds, has gone up to almost 4.2%, again, the highest level in three months. And this is, of course, a big problem for the housing market, everyone, because all the players in the housing market were banking on Fed rate cuts to lower interest rates and stimulate buyer demand, but the exact opposite is happening as we speak. It almost seems as if the Fed has lost control of the economy and of the yield curve. The Fed has got to be really concerned right now because they did a 50 basis point rate cut in mid-September, and it's almost as if the market is saying, we don't care about that. We think you made a mistake. We think inflation is going to get worse in 2025, which is why the bond yields are going up. And I think it's the investors in particular that are really worried right now. I'm going to get to how the, these rising interest rates affect you as a home buyer later in this video, but I'm going to start with investors because these investors cannot make any money right now on their investment properties, and many are already selling, like on the house behind me here in St. Petersburg. This is a house that a big Wall Street investor bought in the middle of 2022 for $550,000. They have since put it on the market for sale and have now priced it at $430,000. So this Wall Street investor, an entity called SFR Acquisitions 2, who owns tens of thousands of homes, they're getting out of the market. They're taking a $120,000 loss from what they purchased it for two years Years ago. Now you guys can let me think, do you think 430 is a fair price for that house? It looks like it was flipped and renovated. It was sold a couple times over the last several years. It was flipped and renovated. Now the investor's taking a $120,000 loss. That's the biggest loss I've seen yet for an investor down here in Florida. I've shown you guys $30,000 losses. I've shown you guys $80,000 losses. That's a six-figure loss. It's the first six-figure loss I've seen. And so when we're already seeing investors sell and sell at losses, that's telling you the market shifting down, the inventory is increasing. But then when you couple that now with the interest rates spiking, you say to yourself, well, just how bad could this investor sell-off get? Because get this, everyone, real estate investors across America own 24 million homes, which is approximately 25% of the entire housing stock in America. One out of four homes is owned by an investor. Now, about 10% of those investor-owned homes are owned by Wall Street investors. Another 30 to 40% are owned by medium-sized investors that own over uh, between 10 and 100 homes. And about 50% of those homes are owned by small investors. So we have widespread composition of that investor ownership. And if these investors have to refinance their debt or take out new debt to purchase properties, they're paying six or 7% and they're losing money. And folks, I kind of want to spend some time explaining to you here how investors look at the housing market and why the investor demand spiked during the pandemic but then has gone way down over the last two years and investors are now selling. Because I think it's important that you guys understand this from a fundamental perspective. So the way that investors make decisions on buying houses is on something called the spread between investment returns and the 10-year U.S. Treasury yield. This is how all big investors, institutional Wall Street investors, make their decisions. And you can see here on this graph, over the last 12 to 13 years, we're tracking the difference between the cap rate for rental properties and the 10-year U.S. Treasury yield. So the cap rate, again, is what you can get in an unlevered return annually from an investment property. The 10-year Treasury yield is what you could get on a government bond, which is a risk-free bond. What you notice is that from 2011 to about 2021, the return on real estate, the cap rate, was significantly higher than the return on the 10-year government bond. We were at around a 55 to 6% cap rate if you bought a rental property compared to around a 3% 10-year tr Treasury yield, which meant that the spread that you 
got as an investor by buying a rental property was about two and a half to three percent above what you would earn buying a government bond. And that positive spread of two and a half to three percent, that's what incentivized all the investors to pile in in the late 2010s and especially in 2020. 2020, the first year of the pandemic, that was the peak spread we saw of real estate out earning government bonds. However, as you can see, this situation has changed considerably. Basically now there's no spread, no return that an investor would get from buying real estate above US government bonds, which is why the investor purchases have plummeted because it, it just doesn't make financial sense to take the risk of buying an investment property if you're not gonna make any money really above government bond returns. I mean, why would you buy an investment property and go through and you know risk maybe losing money on the value, risk uh, the rent going down, risk the property taxes and insurance going up, and then deal with all the headaches of being a landlord if you could sit on your couch and get the same amount of money just by going to Treasury Direct and buying government bonds? You wouldn't. And so this is fundamentally what explains the oscillation in investor purchase demand. There isn't some big conspiracy about investors buying homes. It's simply a function of does the return on the house exceed the return on the bonds? And right now, the answer is no. And this is what makes the recent surge in interest rates so problematic, right? Is that the Fed cut and everyone thought that the long-term bond yields would go down. Well, now they're going back up, meaning that housing, real estate investment is becoming actually less attractive even than it was two months ago to these Wall Street investors and to a lot of medium-sized investors as well, which is why I believe we're gonna to continue to see investors sell homes in the housing market. By the way, folks, you can see I'm in a neighborhood here in Florida that definitely got hit by Hurricane Helene three or four weeks ago. You can see there's a lot of furniture in the front lawn. There's a lot of tree limbs which are down. It's funny because this is an area which is in the south of St. Petersburg it's not even right next to the water, but the storm surge was so bad. I'm gonna show you this here in a second, even more. The storm surge was so bad that even if you were like 10 blocks inland, you still got water in your house in many of these locations. You can see more furniture here in the front lawns. We got a copy machine. You can see we got the garbage truck coming here to pick up some of the garbage, but they're really backlogged in terms of picking up all this all this furniture. Look at this, folks. This is a pile almost as big as the house. And if you just further go down this street, you see it everywhere down this street. That house from the investor is a couple blocks down that way. I'm not sure if that investor house got flooded or not. They cut the price well before the hurricane. So if it did get flooded, they're probably going to have to cut the price by more. We're seeing some owners here in St. Petersburg do massive price cuts due to the flooding. Like I'm seeing some instances of people cutting $200,000 and taking huge losses well below the mortgage just because they can't afford the repairs. And one thing I'd like to do is actually touch upon the economic impact of the hurricanes that have hit Florida and how it's very likely that we see an increase in unemployment in Florida over the next six months. Quite a few people unfortunately lost their jobs due to this hurricane, I've met some of them. People who worked at a beach hotel, who worked at a beach bar or restaurant, that beach bar or restaurant now is closed, their job is gone. In addition, we're now entering peak tourist season down here in Florida, here in Pinellas County, we're not gonna see nearly as many people come for tourism, the beaches are all still closed. So there's gonna be an economic reality that starts showing up from this hurricane pretty soon down here in Florida, at least on the west coast of Florida, that's likely to create even more problems for the housing market. And the thing I just want you guys to be grounded in is that things here are likely to get worse before they get better in terms of the housing market, in terms of the economy. I believe we've got more downside coming here in prices. Those prices need to go lower so the local home buyer can actually afford the houses. If we go on Reventure app in Tampa St. Pete and look at the home values here in Tampa St. Pete and click a button called fair home value, you can see the actual home value is still about 30% above the fair home value based off incomes. So there's still price downside. And at the end of this video, I would encourage a lot of you to go to Reventure app and check out that fair home value button 
on the home value graph. It's a premium feature and it's going to allow you to assess whether your market is over or undervalued. But the way that I really want you folks to think about the housing market right now is that there's going to be opportunity for you all who've been patient with your money, who've been saving your money. There are going to be discounts, big discounts on houses over the next year due to this uh, economic unrest, due to the investors selling, due to the interest in mortgage rates going up higher. So I would encourage you guys to view this actually from a positive perspective. If you're a housing market participant, even if you're a realtor or mortgage broker, view this positively, uh, the prospect of declining prices, because it's gonna bring more buyers back into the market. And the way that you guys can understand where prices are likely to go down the most is by looking at the data. And what we're looking at here, everyone, is the home price forecast score for over 1,000 metro areas on Reventure app. And the areas in the metros in blue have a much higher likelihood of prices dropping. So if you're a buyer investor right now and you, you wanna see declining prices, it's gonna be in these areas in blue. And obviously in Florida, We've talked a lot about this on this channel. Florida is getting hit very hard. Texas is getting hit hard. Colorado is starting to get hit hard. But really, I think the way to kind of take this analysis to the next level, everyone, is go to your current location on Reventure app. We now have a current location button. And take a look at the price forecast for your area. You could see here in Tampa, St. Pete, we're saying price is down. The zip code I was in earlier today, 33705 is a 33 out of 100. Big buyer's market now. But really, I think you want to pair the home price forecast with some other data points, right? Like one that I'm actually looking at lately is median household income because if I'm a buyer right and I want to buy in a place that's going to appreciate in the long run and has some stability in the long run you know higher incomes tend to do that so if I were to set a minimum median income of 80,000 under the filters tab here you can see now we're looking at the home price forecast for higher or above average income zip codes. And this tells us a, a different story. So it's like, if you wanna buy in an area in Tampa St. Pete with above average income and where prices are dropping right now and you can get a discount, it would be these metros. On top of that, you could apply even more filters and say, hey, I want the zip code I buy in to have high population growth. Let's just say 3% the last five years. Okay, we have an even more narrowed down view of where you would wanna buy. And you can apply these filters to zip codes as well as counties and metros across America. Now, before signing off, I wanna show you one last thing, everyone. That's related to the investor discussion I brought up earlier in the video, that the investors are selling, that the interest rates don't make sense. It's actually kind of amazing to me the bifurcation we're seeing in different neighborhoods around the US housing market. Like literally, some neighborhoods are crashing, inventory is exploding, prices are dropping, but just five miles away, the opposite is occurring. And to show you this, I wanna show you the Houston, Texas housing market, because it's one of the most interesting ones. Take a look at this, everyone. Even if you don't live in Texas, you don't live in Houston, you're gonna to wanna to understand what's going on in Houston. Let's start by looking at the home price forecast score in Houston. You could see that to the zip codes to the north, east, and south, we have scores in the 30s, indicating heavy declining market. But on the west side of the metro, we actually have positive scores above 50, even 60 plus, indicating appreciating market. Now this is, this is wild, everyone, because if you're a buyer and investor in Houston, what you're experiencing and where prices will go in the future is going to depend totally on the neighborhood you're in. And this is the case in so many cities. And what's driving these differences in home price forecast is inventory. Take a look at this. The inventory surplus or deficit is the exact inverse. So these zip codes to the north, east, and south, which are the ones that the investors dominate, now have supply that's 50 to 100% above the long-term norms. The supply in these zip codes has skyrocketed. Meanwhile, in these nicer areas to the west and southwest of Houston, supply is still low, 30 to 50% below average, which is of course resulting in very different results on home price growth. The monthly home price growth for September 2024 is still positive in these zip codes with lower inventory, but it's heavily negative in these zip codes to the southeast, east, and north where the investors are dominating. So this highlights how you have to understand your zip code and neighborhood dynamics. It is not enough to know what's going on in your county or your metro. You gotta drill down to your neighborhood if you're a buyer or investor wanting to understand the future and wanting to avoid making a mistake. So go to www.reventure.app right now, do it right now and type in your zip code. We actually have a redesigned front page, everyone. We just had our one year anniversary for Reventure app, so we relaunched the front page. Go check it out, but really type in your zip code right away and start understanding these different trends in home value 
value growth, inventory growth, as well as the home price forecast in your area and pair that with the filtering tools that then allow you to drill into the neighborhoods that best fit your demographic criteria for buying a house. You can access all those features and data under a premium plan. Go to www.reventure.app right now to access that data and make a more informed home buying investment decision in 2025.